Yo, before I start this video, I just want to let you all know that I, like, just woke up and I'm, like, super fucking tired right now, bruh. But I'll do my best to get my points across. Recently, there's been a lot of buzz about the Lightyear trailer. The trailer for an in-universe movie that Andy saw as a kid in the 90s that made him want to get the Buzz Lightyear action figure. <laughs> I just realized. Buzz about the Lightyear trailer. <laughs> That's a pretty clever pun. People have been sharing their excitement for the movie online, and rightfully so. I love everything about this trailer. Every time I watch this, I get overwhelmed with emotions. It feels like a gift to all the people who watched and loved the original Toy Story. And visually, it genuinely looks better than every single movie Pixar has ever made a trailer for. Like, seriously, bro? Pixar thought this was a dog in 1995, Lamau. But there are still people complaining about how good the movie looks. Can you believe it, dude? They're saying that the movie being visually stunning is a flaw. That a movie released in the 90s couldn't ever possibly have this level of visual fidelity. What these people fail to forget is that I mean, it is a universe with talking toys, so it makes sense for the film to look as good as it does. Like, it's just a different animation style. And Buzz himself, yo, look, you look so good, dude! It looks beautiful! I don't know, bro. I know a lot of guys that probably kiss him. And to the people who say, Ah, oh, God, this kid's media fell off. It's so much worse than when I was a kid. Uh, lol. Maybe it's because you're an adult now? You ever think of that? You're not, like, the target audience for these movies anymore. I honestly don't care if this looks like a boring story. It's so pretty, it just doesn't matter, dude. Maybe the childlike sense of wonder and nostalgia you got from movies like Toy Story and Monsters, Inc. was because you were still capable of feeling wonder back then before you became a killjoy on Twitter.com. Hey bro, I'm actually so sick of adults on this site being like, Pixar fell off so hard. Like, dude. The reason you think old Pixar was way better is probably because, you know, you used to be the main target audience, and now you're not. Duh. Now you are 27 complaining on Twitter about kids' movies. And this recent discourse about Pixar movies has got me thinking about another film in the series. One that is criminally overhated and one that only true Toy Story fans, only the most expert, would understand and value. I love Toy Story 4. I don't understand how any true Toy Story fan could hate it. It's just another case of nostalgia blindness in it being a modern movie. And if you think it's bad, it doesn't matter what you think. Lol. Now, I'm sure you're wondering why I think this movie is such a masterpiece, and it's cuz... I mean... <sighs> Look, I had a better reason, but it, it's not something I can explain. Uh, okay, I got it now. I thought... it was... I mean, yeah, you can watch the first three and get a full story. I do not argue that the fourth one did not need it to be made, but you see... You can see Woody finally struggle with not being the favorite toy anymore, a conflict he's never had to face before in his life. It was hard for him to manage not being played with anymore. He was just in the box, and he had come to the realization that Bonnie didn't need him anymore. Woody doesn't do anything for her throughout this movie, and I can't find any clips of Bonnie playing with him in this scene, but all I see is that Woody and Forky are offered to her, and she does not care about Woody whatsoever. Look, I'm not not exactly a big Toy Story guy, but even I can say with absolute certainty that I don't really personally think that she needed him. Forky was her emotional support toy, a toy she could lean on for support, and that would always be there for her no matter what. And it's... it's just... look, it's hard for me to explain. Like I said, I'm really tired, bro. And I just think that... God, I'm fucking blanking so hard, dude. Jesus Christ, let me restart that. I tell you what, why don't we just change subjects, and we'll come back to this later in the video. Let's talk about Buzz in this movie. Oh my god, bro, can I just say how amazing Buzz was in this movie? Because seriously, he's had nothing to do since the first movie. Absolutely nothing, dude. Nothing. Ever since he underwent his character arc, they've just been reusing the same joke for him over and over again for the past 20 years, and man, it's gotten so stale, man. But he was hilarious in this movie. And to people mad about him just pushing his buttons to solve every single one of his problems, 
Uh, have you considered that that's the joke? Plus, he actually undergoes an arc in this movie, something he hasn't done since the very first Toy Story. He's starting to learn how to listen to his inner voice. See, throughout Toy Story 2 and 3, the one who took the horse by the reins was always Woody. He's the one who led the charge and orchestrated all the necessary plans, even going back as far as the first movie. But now, he's finally given his own journey to explore, and he's faced with decisions he has to make all by himself. In other words, he has to start listening to his inner voice, thematically symbolized by his inner voice box. Oh, <laughs> oh my god, I just got chills reading that line, dude. God, this film is so genius, it's just literally spine-chilling, dude. But then, I suppose it's pretty easy to make movies look bad when you oversimplify everything to just someone pushing their buttons over and over again. <laughs> and this ties in perfectly with the movie's best scene, the ending. Woody's final realization where his four movie arc is finally complete and he grows beyond his trivial distorted desires from the original trilogy. Because when you really think about it, Woody was robbed in Toy Story 3. His arc throughout those three movies was all about realizing that toys don't last forever and that Andy would eventually outgrow him and he would no longer be of any use to him. And this idea was ripe with potential for a story. After being forced to be Andy's emotional support toy for his entire life, which, by the way guys, having an emotional support toy is like really unhealthy. This was a chance for Woody to finally break away from the eternal servitude he's doomed to commit himself to from the moment he was built. Only for the film to conclude with him going through the motions once again, being carelessly thrown into the lap of another child where he would be doomed to repeat the same cycle of being played with again and again and again. It's a tragic ending, a truly heartbreaking story where Woody's chance at freedom was almost within his grasp but ultimately taken away at the last second as Andy abandons him on the doorstep of another child. Woody's entire life purpose was just stripped away from him. Who is Woody without Andy? This is a question we're never given an answer for because the director of this movie callously cut away before we see what happens next. All we see is Woody's dead, dejected face as the one and only thing that gave him meaning drives further and further away and there was nothing he could do about it. He hasn't moved on from Andy. Andy made the choice to give up Woody entirely on his own without any sort of interference from any other characters and Woody feels betrayed by this. Understandably so, wouldn't you? He now feels like he doesn't have a purpose anymore and we, as the audience, were left with that same empty pit in our stomach once again wondering, who is Woody without Andy? And in case you want to try to tell me that the short films and TV specials answer that question for us, those aren't canon. So yeah. Wait, wasn't there one where the dinosaur found a boyfriend? <laughs> That's so funny, bro. I'm actually dead. Anyway, back to Toy Story 4. We finally get to see what Woody's role was after Andy abandons him. And as everybody expected, it's miserable. Bonnie doesn't care about him at all. All he does is sit in the closet with no playtime, or, if he's lucky, outside on a stool, but still playing the role of the spectator. I mean, if you need more overt imagery, he's literally stepped on at one point. But he is finally able to break away from his eternity of servitude and achieve achieve true, actual freedom for the first time ever by reuniting with Bo Peep and realizing that there's a much bigger world beyond that one kid he's still clinging to. Think of them as parents, as a husband and wife, who sent their kid off to college, now left with an empty nest and no other children to take care of, and so they are finally able to live their life proper and love each other in a caring, healthy relationship. He's finally learned to help other toys, not just his kid, he's learned he doesn't need to be with Bonnie and can help other people than just a single child. Loyalty was Woody's biggest character flaw, and now that he's done all he can for Bonnie, he's finally able to overcome that flaw. And the genius of this film is that none of this is ever said throughout the movie. It's truly brilliant. It's all about the journey of this movie. That journey he went through didn't happen in the other three movies. You know what I mean? It's called a character arc because they change over it. He could have just changed again. He didn't learn the opposite opposite lesson he learned in the first three movies. He just finally found someone to tell him that his entire way of living life was completely wrong. And to anyone who says that this clip disproves my entire thesis, implying he's only been in the closet for three out of seven days in the week rather than not being played with for years like I've been saying, you have a point. I offer my rebuttal, which would be 
It's just bad argument. Fake fans of this series like to use the original trilogy to try to support their point, but it doesn't matter what happens in the first three movies. Well, okay, I guess they do matter a little bit. <sighs> Probably shouldn't have said that, should I? Well, in the context of Woody's journey in Toy Story 4, you can just kind of throw that away for now. It's important what he learned in those first three movies because this lesson overwrote those values. It didn't overwrite those movies, it's the conclusion of his character arc. The moment where Buzz stares into Woody's eyes mirrors how Andy did the same to him and then doesn't say anything for exactly 30 seconds and you can tell exactly what he's thinking about. You know he's thinking about all the other toys he can help instead of one random useless kid. And people try to tell me I can't prove he's thinking about that in this moment. Like, really? What else would he be thinking about? Jacking off? Do you think he's thinking about Bo Peep? Why would he do that? It's not even about love. It has nothing to do with love. It's all about his journey. And ultimately, it's up to interpretation. You can't just go on what's in the movie itself. You gotta use your brain to actually think a little bit. And when you finally do that, when you finally turn on your brain, actually think critically about the movies you're watching, you will see just how truly brilliant this scene is. Ah, oh, man, this is so exhausting. Alright, I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. I'm just kind of tired. I just kind of want to stop talking about this. But honestly, the best thing this movie gave us wasn't even the film itself. It was the online reaction. For reasons that will forever baffle me, something about this movie has really made certain sad, lonely individuals particularly angry about a magical toy movie made for kids. People are legitimately getting this angry over an animated movie. Animation is something kids enjoy and adults have to endure, which is what makes this movie so amazing. It's not only exposed the man children who take these animated kids films way too seriously, but it also separated the true Toy Story ones who understand the work of pure brilliance that this movie is, and how it's the pinnacle of cinema and the fake ones. I can't tell you how happy it makes me that so many of you are torn by this movie. You all deserve it for letting a movie make you this upset. And if it makes you scream this much, then just ignore it. If you ignore the movie, it doesn't exist. It's not difficult. I genuinely cannot fathom them dedicating so much of my life to angrily shouting about a movie. Like, six hours? Are you kidding me? It's a sign of poor editing. If you can't summarize your thoughts about a movie in 10 minutes or less, then you're a terrible writer and have no chance of making it in this industry. Do you know the turmoil that writers go through during projects like this? Word count limits are the least of their concerns, especially in the case of this movie when the creative control was all over the place, which is even more of a reason to stop being so so hard on this movie. The director changed hands halfway through. None of the other Toy Story movies have had this level of production troubles, so seriously, cut it some slack. Oh, and just saying, if it really were as indefensible as some people think, then I wouldn't have been able to write up five full pages explaining the complexity of this movie's ingenious storytelling, which, by the way, none of you have actually managed to respond to yet. I'm sorry if I seem particularly upset in this video, but this is something I've been meaning to get off my chest for a long time. Time, because Pixar created a work of pure genius with Toy Story 4, and while it has been recognized by the majority of people with a brain as the masterpiece that it is, it's still a vocal minority that just refuses to shut up about it. So I finally got fed up with it and decided to put my two cents out there to push back against the hate. Josh Cooley, you will never see this video, but if you do, I want you to know that even though some people will always be too dumb to think for themselves and understand your genius, I understood it. And I have endless respect for you as a filmmaker and actively look forward to seeing your next project, Untitled Animated Transformers Film. I'm happy to see that your skills will continue to be used on the most intellectually advanced films of our generation, and I'm happy that these characters reached the perfect conclusion to their stories, with Buzz finally being able to stand on his own and make decisions for himself, and Woody achieving the true happy ending he always deserved after having it robbed from him in Toy Story 3. And that is the unbridled genius of Toy Story 4.